One of the oldest dinosaurs ever discovered was just found, and it's changing everything we thought we knew where dinosaurs come from. Oh, and there's also a new T-Rex relative that was quite different than the Tyrant King. I'm Evan Jebikar, the Daily Dino Guy, and in this video, we're breaking down the most mind-blowing new dinosaur discoveries, including a tiny island dweller and one of the earliest long-necked dinosaurs. So let's get right into it. Our first dinosaur on the list is Zhongwainsaurus Junchengai, which is a newly discovered armored dinosaur from China that lived around 113 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. Now, if you're thinking, hey, this guy kind of looks like an Ankylosaurus, you're not wrong. So this dinosaur falls within the same group of armored dinosaurs called the Ankylosaurus. This is actually the second species of Zongwangsaurus, with the first being found in 2007. And it's distinct from the original species in that it's slightly smaller, but this was no tiny dino. Zongwangsaurus Junchenga reached about 15 feet or four and a half meters and weighed roughly 2.1 tons or 1.9 metric tons, which is huge. Now at that size, it wouldn't have been the fastest dinosaur, but that wouldn't have been a problem because it would have preferred to stand and fight. And here's the kicker. This guy didn't have the classic club tail at the end of his tail like most other ankylosaurs. This dinosaur lived over 40 million years before ankylosaurus. So instead, Zhongwainsaurus Junchengai had a stiff reinforced tail that was covered in small spiky bones called osteoderms, giving it the look of a prehistoric mace. Not as bulky club, but just as dangerous. Imagine getting hit with that. Researchers believe that this dinosaur's tail was an early precursor for the massive tail clubs that we see later in armored dinosaurs. So basically, Zhongwainsaurus walked so ankylosaurus could smash. Next up is another dinosaur from China, but lived around 168 million years ago during the Middle Jurassic. This is Jin Chuan loom at about 33 feet or 10 meters long. This plant eater was already massive for its time, but size isn't what makes it so important. This dinosaur marks a major turning point in the evolution of long neck dinosaurs. So in the early Jurassic, sauropods were mostly smaller with relatively shorter necks and were still light enough to walk on two legs. There were very few species that had the iconic body style that we all recognize. But in the middle Jurassic, this all changes. These older two-legged sauropods go extinct and the bigger four-legged sauropods like Jin Chuan Loom end up spreading across the entire globe. It's not entirely clear why this replacement happened, but there's a couple hypotheses and they may all be right. The first one is that there was a short period of climate change at the end of the early Jurassic. A series of volcanoes erupted in Antarctica and quickly warmed the planet. Now, normally climate change causes specialized animals to go extinct and more generalized animals become more prevalent. But that's the total opposite of what happened. Generalists like the two-legged sauropods ended up going extinct and the more specialized dinosaurs began to thrive in their environment. By looking at its skull, Jintuan Lu was pretty specialized for its time. It had spoon-shaped teeth, which is something that nearly all sauropods had from the middle Jurassic onward. And these teeth were really good at stripping the leaves off trees and gave them a competitive edge. Another is a unique body style of early sauropods. Rather than searching for food, these relatively newer sauropods likely would sit in one spot and graze across an entire area. With their longer necks, they would have been able to eat from the trees. They also would have used their long necks to graze across fields of ferns and smaller plants without having to move their bodies. And since they were able to stand on four legs instead of two, they could support their body more easily. All of this gave them a competitive advantage against the older two-legged sauropods. Like I said, either or both of these hypotheses could be true. But regardless of the hypothesis, Jin Chuan Lun reveals more about the unique rise of sauropods. Moving on, we have Toleta, which was a tiny duckbill dinosaur that lived in Morocco about 66 million years ago. Now this makes Toleta one of the last dinosaurs to ever exist right before the Cretaceous extinction, except for birds, obviously. So Toleta comes from the Arabic word for three. Now, why is this dinosaur named three? Because this is the third dwarf hadrosaur species discovered in Morocco after Anjabia and Minkaria. Most duck-billed dinosaurs are huge. Other hadrosaurs during this time, like Edmontosaurus, could reach up to 43 feet or 13 meters in length. But Toleta is a fraction of the size. It was only about the size of a camel. It might sound strange, but there's actually 
actually a biological reason for why this dinosaur was so small. So back in the end of the Cretaceous, Morocco wasn't fully connected to Africa like it is today. It's hypothesized that it was a warm tropical island thanks to the super high sea levels. And when animals get trapped on islands, weird things seem to happen. One of those things is insular dwarfism, where big animals evolve into smaller versions to survive on limited resources. This is why all the hadrosaurs in Morocco were so much smaller, not just Taleta. Even sauropod fossils from this area were smaller than average, suggesting that nearly all types of plant-eating dinosaurs shrank in size to adapt to the limited island resources. But hadrosaurs like Taleta are not very common in Africa, especially during this time period. They're actually way more common in Europe, which is separated by the Mediterranean Sea. So how did all these crested dinosaurs end up on the island of Morocco? The authors suggest that rather than migrating all the way around the Mediterranean or even swimming across the vast sea, they instead were thrown out to sea on biological rafts. Intense storms would have ripped out trees and plant material, matted them all together, and formed a huge floating piece of land that could hold smaller animals as they drifted across sea. Now you're probably thinking, there's no way something like that could actually happen. But we do have evidence of this happening in environments today. Biological rafts have been found to carry small animals like primates and birds across bodies of water after a storm. So it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. So overall, Toledo reveals a unique evolutionary story of hadrosaurs right before they all went extinct in the Cretaceous. Now, jumping all the way back to the Triassic, we have an early dinosaur called Anagyra. So this dinosaur lived 236 million years ago in Brazil, making it the oldest dinosaur on our list and one of the oldest dinosaurs, period. So Anagyra was a very small dinosaur, only about the size of a dog. Now you might be wondering, how do we even know that this dinosaur was not just some weird ancient lizard? Well, it all comes down to the hips. So the hips of Anagyra have many unique ridges and grooves that you only find in early dinosaurs, known as psilosaurs. So these small dinosaurs are thought to be the earliest members of the Ornithischians, or bird hip dinosaurs, which include the vast majority of plant-eating dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, Parasaurolophus, and Triceratops. But the most interesting part of Inagyra is how it reveals the origin of dinosaurs. So Brazil at the time was not a tropical coastal country like it is today. Back in the Triassic, all of the continents were combined together to form Pangaea, which meant that Brazil at the time was a hot and dry desert that was entirely landlocked. We actually find a lot of psilosaurs in Brazil and Argentina during this time, but we don't find them to the north or south of this region. Now why is that? Well, north of this region, Region was the equator, which reached an average of 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. This region was so hot and dry that no animals have been able to cross either hemisphere, which kept them stuck in their respective hemispheres. The South Pole was also seen to be just cold enough to discourage reptiles, archosaurs, and dinosaurs from living there. All this suggests that early dinosaurs originate in the southern hemisphere, the Goldilocks zone of the climate in Brazil and Argentina. Once Pangaea cooled, their range expanded and allowed them to evolve into many unique and larger types of dinosaurs. Before we move on to the next dinosaur, I want to give a massive thank you to the small army of people who make these videos possible. My Daily Dino Direct members. Daily Dino Direct isn't just another Patreon. It's an opportunity for you, yes you, the one watching this video, to get a university level education on dinosaurs for a fraction of the cost. The members get early access to these videos, exclusive presentations from me and other top paleontologists in the field, and a private community where I answer questions, share dinosaur discoveries, and discuss the newest research. If you want to go from just being a dinosaur enthusiast to a dinosaur authority, then you need to join Daily Dino Direct because members are learning about things you can't learn from anywhere else. Go to the link in the description to sign up today and get a special discount on your first month. Moving on to our next dinosaur, we have Konkulu, which lived in Mongolia 96 million years ago. So this dinosaur stood about six 16 feet or five meters long and weighed about 1,650 pounds or 750 kilograms. Konkulu wasn't the biggest predator, but it was still a pretty deadly predator. It had a bite force ranging from 2,400 to 5,000 newtons, which is stronger than many other predators of the same size. It was also extremely quick. Thanks to its long legs, Konkulu could reach speeds up to 30 miles per hour or 49 kilometers per hour. Put all this together and it would have been the apex predator 
predator of ancient Mongolia. You might have recognized, based on the big head and small arms of Khan Kulu, and thought, kind of looks like a shrunk down version of T-Rex. And you'd be right, Khan Kulu is so important to paleontology because it helps reveal the evolutionary history of tyrannosaurs, which are the groups of dinosaurs that gave rise to T-Rex. So this dinosaur lived during a weird moment in Earth's history. Around this time, many of the big predators were disappearing due to climate change. The giant predators that used to live in hotter climates were beginning to go extinct as the Earth began to cool down. That left a major ecological vacuum, and Tyrannosaurus stepped in as the new apex predators. In only a few million years, Tyrannosaurus went from being dog-sized predators to Clydesdale-like predators like Konkulu. But it didn't stop there. As the Earth continued to cool down and no other major predators evolved to compete against them, Tyrannosaurus got even bigger until they eventually reached gigantic sizes like T-Rex. So Konkulu is a midpoint in their evolution as they transition from quick, agile predators to slower but more powerful apex predators. And our last dinosaur is a Stigmasaurus which lived in Argentina 95 million years ago. So this long-necked dinosaur was about 39 feet or 12 meters long. The Stigmasaur was a specific type of long-necked dinosaur known as a Rebacosaur. So these sauropods had a more vertical posture, allowing them to focus on eating plants closer to the ground. Their heads were also unique in that they were more box-shaped, and they featured hundreds of pencil-thin teeth that scooped up soft ferns and horsetails, kind of like a comb. Now, the Stigmasaur is actually the third Rebacosaur within the past year has been found in Argentina during this time period. The most recent species were Cytosaura and Ciencia Argentina. This region was exploding in diversity with Rebacosaurs, and they seemed to be killing it during this time period. But if you remember from Konkulu, Earth was going through some serious climate change around 100 to 90 million years ago. South America during this time was still relatively warm, which allowed Rebacosaurs to flourish. But within a few million years, nearly all of the Rebacosaurs in this region went extinct including Astigmasaura. Temperatures cooled and the warm tropical environments that Astigmasaura was used to faded away. With colder temperatures and plant life radically changing, Astigmasaura and all Rebacosaurs eventually went extinct. While dinosaurs like Konkulu show that some animals were able to take advantage of the climate change, Astigmasaura shows that climate change can be a threat to many types of animals that aren't able to adapt. Before we go today, I gotta ask you a question. You wanna start standing out from the crowd? You wanna wear clothes that get you compliments everywhere you go? If so, then my dino clothes are exactly what you need. I get tons of DMs and reviews about how people love these clothes and constantly get compliments in them. So if you want to start feeling magnetic as you walk down the street, click the link below in the description to grab yours today. And don't forget, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video from me. Till next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, the Daily Dino Guy.